Welcome to the seventh episode of Athlete POV. Today we're sitting down with Mike Morris, Defense and University of Michigan. We're excited to have him on. Can't wait to hear what he has to say. We're going to get some insight. Uh, what's going on, Mike? Uh, none much, man. None much. I appreciate you for having me, though. Of course. Let's get right into it. Well, how, how did this, how'd you know when this defense was really going to be a unit collectively, and how do you think it took off? Um, all right, so uh, I don't think anyone has told this story, so inside scoop. <laughs> um, so um, so we're in, we're in spring ball. Spring ball is like, spring ball is a grind here. And like we're we're grinding it out, and um, so we get into meetings. We're in a meeting room with Coach Mack and stuff like that. He says, "All right, we we'll throw y'all a bone. Everyone put on your everyone put on um, put on your workout stuff, and meet Coach Herb downstairs." We're like, "We got to work out or something? Like what's got to go down?" So we all go down there. Coach Herb says, "All right, everyone, take off your shoes and socks." And uh, we're gonna have like um, like a stretching, like a recovery, like a recovery workout. So we're like, okay, let's go, because like our bodies are really sore and stuff like that. So like it's a recovery day. We're rolling out our quads, our calves, and all that. And then the coaches start coming down, walking out with us. So the coaches are doing it with us, and we're like, and well, I see, I see um, some of the coaching staff. I see uh, Coach Kling down there. Coach Mack is down there. All of them, Coach Hilo, I see all of them down there, and they're they're doing it with us, and I'm like, all right. I mean, that's something I've never experienced when like a coach like actually does stuff with you, and like goes to the fire with you. So I was like, all right, let's let's go, and uh, we're doing the stretching, we're doing the stretching stuff, right? And then Coach Herb says, uh, all right, everybody, strip down and get in the cold tub, and uh, we're like. All right, let's go. And then, like uh, all the all the players are, we start um, we strip down to our just our shorts, take off our shirt, put it to the side, and then we're all all the players were walking to the walking to the. We have a big old like uh, pool, like right, a right, uh, a big old pool of a uh, it's cold, and we're all walking there. Then I see um, Coach Hilo, Coach Clink, they're taking off their clothes to him like, hey, what y'all about to do? And they're like, we gotta get in with y'all. And I'm like, all right, let's go. <laughs> And then, it was just, it was, and then, like, all the coaches, every all the defensive coaches in there, all of us going there, and Coach Herb is like, all right, everybody get in. We get in. Everybody gets in. It's cold. We're freezing. And then everybody just starts splashing water at each other. Coach Nua, he's over there right beside me splashing water. He's yelling. The whole defense is yelling. You can't hear a thing. Like, I couldn't hear anything. And then... I think, I don't know who it was, but they brought it, the, the Shirley District coach, they brought in the speaker. They brought in the speaker, right? And we're all, ah, let's go. We're spraying, like, imagine, like, like 60 dudes just in, like, in, like, this, like, cold pool, just splashing water, yelling. <laughs> and then all you hear is, don't you know, pump it up, <laughs> pump it up. And then that made us go even crazier. <laughs> and then Coach Herb is like, all right. He blows the whistle and says submerge. So that means you get your whole body under, and your whole head and everything. So we submerge, come back up. Ah, let's go. And we do that three more times. And I would say like that was definitely the best experience. Like I, that felt better. Then definitely didn't feel better than being Ohio State. But it, that was definitely one of like the top three moments of the season. Just us as a defense just enjoying that amazing moment together and that was definitely that that's when i knew like okay because like that let us know that the coaches are in there with us we're all in they're like the coaches are all in we're all in like we believe in y'all y'all believe in us like that was just holy definitely. shit <laughs> that i've never heard that from i mean I'm, i don't know if anyone does anything similar to that probably not with the coaches getting in a cold tub with you guys <laughs> no. that's amazing <laughs> Oh my God! Wow, I I'm, I don't even know what to say. That's amazing, and I'm sure that had a big impact on when uh, this whole defense how it became so destructive. <laughs> how yeah. how far into the season did this happen, or before? It was in spring ball. Spring ball. So it was like right when the coaches got there. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm sure that was a good bonding moment to get everyone. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely. That's when like that's when I knew like okay, I'm gonna ride or die with Mac. I'm gonna ride or die. That, that's fucking crazy, man. Um, oh man, wow. That's when that's when I really like. Don't you know? Pump it up. That's when I really started liking that song. After that, 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, what, what's your music taste like? Um, I listen to a lot of, uh, I used to listen to a lot of rap, but like now I'm starting to dial it down. Like I listen to a lot of Brett Fias, uh, Gibeon, um, what's his name? Um, there's a lot of really like R&B artists. I got you, yeah. Yesterday, Mozzie was saying he's a big Rod Wave guy. <laughs> Rod Wave is really yeah. good. Really good. Yeah, I found that a lot of you and him and uh, a couple other athletes I've been talking to, really they said when they got to college, they started just getting more chill music. Like, yeah, it's I like, feel like, like. Yeah, what do you want to say? No, no, go ahead. Like, in high school, like, I was real, like, like, uh, 21 Savage and, uh, Kodak Black. And I was just, like, just future, just, like, swinging my dreads. <laughs> but now, like, I'm real, like, riding the car, just, like, listening to, listening, like, to her, and, to his and hers. <laughs> just in the car, just just cooling. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's. I think it's probably like a a, a sense of maturity, maybe, just by you. I, yeah, I definitely feel like yeah. that is too. Mm. Yeah, probably mellowed out. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. Hundred <laughs> percent, man. That's great stuff. That's great. So what I found most interesting, being from Florida yourself, uh, and you went to American Heritage High School, one of the top high schools really in the country. Uh, what 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 was the big what made you what why, why was Michigan like the school for you like what made you go there the most? Um, honestly, I just prayed over it. Um, so um, uh, I had a uh, I was originally committed to Florida State, right? And, uh, uh, just like um, I was a little iffy about it, and then um, I uh, had uh, I opened up my recruitment just a little bit, and that I invited a school like Tennessee and uh, Michigan. And, right. Uh, Devin Bush was there, so he um he right. played with my and um Florida State. And they were like, Bro, just take a visit. So we took a visit, me and my dad fell in love and then uh yeah, I just prayed over it and then um yeah, from here on out and I just I made the best decision of my life for real. <laughs> That's awesome. And as as personally a Michigan fan myself, believe it or not, um so happy to have you there. I mean in, instant impact this year. We saw you started your first games this year. Uh, it was really fun to watch you. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, so I also want to know, take me through a day of like a day in the life of like a Michigan athlete. Like what, what's the normal schedule in season? I mean, AJ will give you the best one. AJ Henney does uh, he makes TikToks and uh, he has the I best one. But, uh, <laughs> honestly, uh, just a regular like school day or like camp? Uh, give me like in season, like for example, the week leading up to playing Ohio State, what were you going through that week? body was going through it through like the end of the season um i wake up i wake up um at like eight good treatment i have class at like uh nine or ten or whatever on uh some days and some days i had class eight thirty, and then i had treatment after after like uh like 10 or 11 and then we had meetings from um meetings from like one one thirty, one fifteen, or one thirty, all the way up until what time? Like around three something, or three thirty, or three whatever. And then we had practice from uh, four until uh, six or four. From Monday, Mondays it was a uh, four like to five ten because it was like a walkthrough day. Right. Tuesdays are. Um, a bit of heavier, uh, like a, a big bang practice. So it's like a hour of 55. Mm -hmm. So from like four to five fifty, fifty five fifty, five fifty five. Wednesdays are a big pass third down day. So it's um, it's a two hour practice. So from four to six. Thursday we go down a bit from uh, we go from four to like the five forty five, mm -hmm. and then Friday is only like an hour hour practice. Wow. So yeah. <laughs> so I'm seeing every day is like a different like source or a different form like each section is different I'm, I'm guessing you have like uh, segments where like a horn sounds or something and you go over somewhere is that oh like sort God. of so how we started off it's like uh, I think it's like a Navy SEAL siren you know how the purge it's like uh, yeah that's that's how we know like okay it's time to, it's time to start practice <laughs> that's actually pretty cool it probably gets you fired up every day <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm, I'm also a, a New York Jets fan, and I would go to Jets camp sometimes, and we would see mm-hmm. they would have a clock with like 15 minutes on it, and like a siren would go every like section of the practice, whether it be like inside run or past like seven on seven practice or mm-hmm. the team period, whatever. Is it sort of like that kind of? Um, there was under the sirens. Uh, Coach Harbaugh has he's very vocal. So, uh, <laughs> He blows his whistle and everybody just immediately snaps our heads to him. And uh, we have a play, we have a clock. Like the clock will, everyone just watches the clock and then um, mm. we just move accordingly. Yeah. How much has Harbaugh played an influence on like your recruitment or like on your play overall and your position coaches? Um, he's definitely been a really big influence. Um, he always encouraged me to be better, especially uh, this past season after spring ball when um, I started really uh, playing really well. He, uh, we all had individual meetings with him, and he said, um, you're doing really good. I want you to keep it up. And, um, yeah, he just always encouraged me to be better, be better. He always, uh, him and his dad always say, um, uh, like, you improve every day, and I'm happy to see that. Hmm. And I can imagine being next to some guy like Hutchinson every day in practice. I'm sure you guys make each other better and the influence oh, he has. Yeah, it's definitely amazing. Hutchinson and, and David Adabo, <laughs> it's um, – yeah. Just, just both of them. It's a, uh, it's, it's really real to see because um, I actually came in with David. He was a, he was a mid year, but I came in the, in the summer, and uh, we worked out together every day. Uh, me, him, and uh, Gabe Newberg. Mm. Uh, just to see just his development is just, uh, I'm just so happy for him. So happy for him. Hundred percent. I mean, possibly the first pick in the draft. That's a pretty big step for anybody's career. I mean, that's goal for anybody. Mm. Yeah. With uh. That, that Michigan State game, you had an interception. That must have been pretty shocking for you for a defensive lineman. What did that feel like? Uh, it was amazing. <laughs> uh, it was amazing. Uh, in the moment, it was uh, incredible. Um, I remember just um, the ball going up, and I'm just looking at it. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to get a kick. Oh, my gosh, I'm going to get a kick. I'm looking at it I'm like, Mike, get the ball, get the ball, get the ball. And I caught it. And I have, I have, I have really good catch and skills. I played tight end in high school, but I cradled it. <laughs> and then the only thing was in my mind was like, don't fumble, don't fumble, and just put your head down and just run into whoever comes. Because like David always makes fun of me. If you ever watch that play, like David's all the way to the left. Oh, yeah, of me. I've seen it. And he's and he's like going like this, like Mike, bro, come on, come on. And he always he always says he always sends me that video saying Mike, bro, if you just cut left, you would have scored and we would have probably won the game. And yeah, that ate, that ate me alive a little bit after the game. Yeah, I can feel you. Yeah, that I mean, it was great to watch. Great to see that. Not because it's so shocking. No, no defense alignment ever thinks. Yeah, this play, I'm gonna get it. Yeah, I'm getting the pick. No. <laughs> man, oh man. So that I mean, over time, like you train every day, you get better every day. Some sort of luck has to come eventually, and that's just one mm-hmm. of the benefits of training every day. What's yeah. been like? What's been like one? training aspect like one movement one thing you do every day that really benefits your training um for me personally i always do like uh like a hip exercises so aiden um aiden actually put me on this uh like this glute exercise like glute and hip exercise that like uh, helps out with like your lower back because like i've been having lower back problems Hmm. and ever since he showed me it like uh, my hips have improved my hips are loosened up a little bit and um yeah, I've had three hip surgeries in my right hip, so um, that definitely helps a lot with like uh, mobility and um, just being agile. Hundred percent. In in, um, in high school, I played football as well. I mean, mm-hmm. the biggest thing my coach has ever said was mobility, flexibility is super yeah. important. Flexibility is key. Like very underrated, but super important for really doing anything. Because in the game, your body can bend any way. You get hit a certain way. It's so yeah. important to be flexible and and mobile. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, so that this kind of goes with um, with training. So now Michigan's facility, I'm, I'm assuming, has a, a wide variety of food options, and in the locker room, in the facility, what are some of your favorites, and how does like the food really go for uh, the University of Michigan? Uh, the foods, uh, the foods good. Um, we have like uh, this um, snack station that everyone devours, <laughs> um, like this uh, jerky. They have chicken, like a buffalo chicken jerky. It's so good. Wow. It's definitely my favorite. <laughs> then we have teriyaki jerky. I eat so much of it that uh, I just got sick of it. Mm. That's really good. Uh, we have uh, all kinds of um, 
natural grain bars. Uh, we have um, applesauce, like uh, fruit cups. There's all kind, of, all kind of stuff in there. Yeah, uh, I love going in there and just snacking on stuff. I was talking to uh, Mazi yesterday. Another one of your teammates. I saw that. <laughs> and he, he was going crazy saying how much food they have and like Oh yeah. Like he was just going so in depth of like how how great it is, like how great Michigan is, like really the like yeah. facilities and everything. It's really, it's really nice. It's really nice. I bet. Yeah, so now what what does next year look like for you? What are your some what are some of your plans, some of your goals? What's uh, uh Um, I'm just uh trying to just grind. Just uh I think everybody's expecting somebody to be the next Hutch, the next David Ajabo. But um, honestly, all I can do is just be the best version of myself. So that's what I'm working on right now, just being um, the best Mike Morris that uh, that I can be. Not really worried about uh, – I'm worried about the season, but, again, I'm not worried about uh, LeBron right now, the process. Right. I'll get to there. And then we'll eventually get to there, and um, we're going to do amazing things. Right. Regardless how you guys play next year, there's always going to be comparisons to say this yeah. this past year where Hutchison broke the sack record. Every, yeah. Everybody's <laughs> going to compare it. So it's like there's definitely thoughts in my mind of, okay, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. And this is like in my in my headspace, I'm like, I'm not going crazy with any of this. I'm just like just trying to be the best version of myself. 100%. And that's all you can do. If you worry too yeah. much in your head, that's when you start doing stuff you're not really – Mm-hmm. Like the best stuff, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I have to know from you, when you guys beat Ohio State, what what was it like? Like what was oh what was it like on campus, the locker room? Tell me what went through the whole thing. It was so <laughs> unreal. It was so unreal. Uh, when we won, um, before before we even won, I'm looking at um, I'm looking at uh, so Aiden sits right here, Jabba sits right here, up the and then Jay, and then I'll sit, like, in a chair in front of them, and then it's Braden right here. Right. Looking, I'm looking at all of us. I'm looking at everybody. I'm like, <laughs> wait, we're about to win, we're about to win. And they're like, they're like, they're like, yeah, we're about to win. <laughs> and then Hutch is over there like, bro, come on. We need to lock in. Let's lock in. And then we just, uh, H2 does his thing. We we hold the we hold the offense to score, like, Every time they got the ball, they scored in like seven minutes. It was like taking off the clock. So we were doing a good job. And it's like the whole game, I'm just like, bro, we're going to win this game. We're going to win this game. And then when we did it, <laughs> I was so tired because they went on a long drive. But when I just I just saw all, everybody rush the middle, and then I'm just sitting over there, and I watched like 10,000 people jump the gate, jump off, jump off the field, and just run to the middle. And I'm like – Let's go! <laughs> and then we just, I run into the middle. And then we just, I just see more people just pouring in, pouring in. I see to see the picture of the whole thing was just like, yo, that was crazy. That was crazy. That was <laughs> probably like definitely a core moment in my football career. Definitely a core moment 100%. in my life. Like just that I beat, like, just like us, we beat Ohio State. It was an amazing feeling, amazing vibe. Everybody was just happy. And uh, the next day, coach was happy. Uh, it just felt, it just felt like a monkey was just lifted off our shoulders. I can imagine. It felt like a big old King Kong monkey just lifted <laughs> off our shoulders. Man, how, how many people do you think were on that field after the game? Oh, it had to be at least like what? Well, about it was about like almost a hundred. Well, almost one hundred and ten thousand people there. I probably say it was about a good fifty plus thousand people on that field. It was deep. Like, I couldn't move. <laughs> it took me, it had to be like 30 plus minutes just to be like a lock in. That is absolutely crazy. And watching it on TV, probably one of the yeah. greatest moments besides, I mean, maybe win the Big Ten. But, uh. Dang. That was insane. Absolutely crazy, man. How, and now, now before, the, before all this, right? Uh. COVID happened, and actually it's probably still going on right now. What what was it like in the off season where you couldn't really go back to normal? So now you're in COVID, you're probably not in the facility every day normally. What what are you doing at home? What are you doing on your own? Is there something that you did every day kept to stay sane? It definitely sucked because uh, in 2019 when they sent us all home, I was actually battling, coming back from uh, 
uh, labrum tear in my hip. So I had surgery and everything. And I just had to like zoom in with the trainers and just do like my individual workouts with them mm. and do like separate workouts with the coaching staff. Cause like they split us up into groups. So all we had to do was um, just notify them that we're working out. So we'll take a video of ourselves working out or they'll send us a workout, workout and we'll have to do it. And we just have yeah. to take a video of us make, doing it just to make sure that everyone's working out and doing what they're supposed to do. Mm. And I can imagine how difficult that could be because accountability, yeah, was, accountability yeah, now accountability becomes was, the number yeah, one thing. Yeah. So, like, to say everyone did it, I don't know. However, I feel like we, like, uh, probably 90% of the team definitely was uh, locked in. 100%. Because how can you get from not doing anything there to – where you guys won the Big Ten this past year. You guys probably were right on it um, as a team collectively, and I commend you for that. That was probably a really good uh, way to handle it because you guys, this uh, not this past year, the year before, 2-4 and four record wasn't probably best according to Michigan standards, right? And I'm yeah. sure you guys were like, we got to fix something. No matter what it takes, yeah. we got to do something. And then uh, we had some changes in the coaching coaching room, and um, uh, it, was, it was definitely a, a change for us and uh, probably was um, a good change. And uh, ever since then, like our first day of spring ball, which is something this, like I've never, I've never experienced it before. First day of spring ball, we all get there and we're just having fun. Like I, like I, like mystery practices have never been fun to me. It's always been like a grind, but like we were grinding, we we're having an amazing time. And after the practice, everyone just got up and we're just like, we all come to the circle. We're all jumping around. Hey, hey, hey! And it was just—it was just like a naturally amazing moment, and that's when I knew, like, okay, we're gonna team special. Gonna, we're gonna do something special, <laughs> yeah. Man, that's amazing to hear from like behind the scenes how the season went, how it formed, stuff like that. Yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, the last thing that we always ask every athlete on this, uh, this is our seventh episode, so I want to thank mm -hmm. you for being one of the first on with plans to put out an episode every week. Um, last question. If you had to give any advice to, say, an athlete out there that's struggling with something, going through a hard time, what would you say or give any advice to someone like that? Um, I would say that um, I feel like everyone going into anything has a plan. Like, my plan to coming into Michigan was, okay, we're going to, play a little bit our freshman year, right? We're going to work into the a bigger role my sophomore year. Senior, so, uh, junior year, we're starting, and then we're gone. Hmm. Like, I'm a three. Or finishing four, I'm starting junior year and senior year. That's the plan. That's what we're going to do. Da, da 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 Worked out all the kinks. And then when you get here, it's like, it's nothing that you imagine, and, like, you get punched in the mouth. And I just want to, like, the one thing I tell everybody is, you have a plan, but if it goes, excuse my language, if it goes to shit, like, the world isn't over. 100%. And, like, you just have to, just, like, our coach, our extreme district coach tells us all the time, like, like, everyone has a plan if they get punched in the mouth. Like, don't concern yourself with the future. Don't concern yourself with what's about to happen. Just worry about today, and it's attack the day. So I would just tell everybody, just, like, just moving forward, don't have any not don't have any plans for the future, but don't be surprised when the future isn't what you expected. Hundred percent. Things come on the fly to everybody, and yeah, you just it comes gotta on the fly. adjust. Yeah. Gotta adjust, to adjust, adapt, and you just gotta keep rolling. Because if you stop, someone else is right there taking your spot. You know. Exactly, and um, yeah, that's something I had to deal with uh, from sophomore, from my freshman and sophomore year, and uh, yeah, it's just um, you have to just attack the day every day. Love it. 100%. Great stuff. All right. That was episode seven of Athlete POV. We're sitting down with Mike Morris. We want to thank him again for coming on. Wish him the best this year and uh, looking forward to seeing what the future holds for you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> of course.